Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Charlie. This is my dad, Mike, and uh, what are you wearing? Your raincoat. Why? Because we're talking about humidity. I don't like getting wet. Welcome back to Bax's Balls. <laughs> So as you gather, today we're talking about humidity. The question is, what is it? Humidity is the percentage of water vapor or water in the air. Oh. oh. And we're going to talk about how to lessen humidity or, in most cases, how to increase humidity uh, for your snake. So, where do you go? We're shooting over here. Oh. Okay, so first we're going to talk about the tools that we need, or that you will need, in order to start to control humidity and see where it's at in your enclosures for your reptiles. Number one, hygrometer. Boom, there it is. That's obviously a dial one, you can just get that from, you can get all these from pretty much just pet stores or whatever. You can get digital ones too. Uh, that uh, it, it have a little probe in there and gives a digital readout and it tells you what it is in there as well. Uh, you can also get uh, just a handheld one that's a lot like uh, the uh, laser temp guns and you just stick it in there and you hold it. It's not like a laser thing but you hold it in there and it can give you a humidity reading as well. That's another way. Uh, now in order to put humidity into your enclosures what you will need are one of the above. One. Hand mister. Boom. Boom. Two. Garden mister. Pump sprayer. <laughs> no, it's not pumped up. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we get it. We get it. Okay. That's enough of the toys for you. Uh, I find the hand mister to, it, it does already if you just have a couple animals, once you get a few more animals, uh, a garden mister or a pump sprayer will do much better. You pump it up and away you go and you just do your whole room, wipe the water off my face here, and you do the whole room in just one shot or you maybe got to pump it up again, but either way it's a whole lot easier than doing this 500 times. But anyways, after that, there's also, if you want, you can use a watering can and just go like that and just put some water in. I find the mister to be better than that, uh, just because you get more control, more even spread over where it goes. And after that, uh, probably the most elaborate and probably best setup too is a misting system where you have a bucket of water with a pump and, uh, and a bunch of pipes and tubes uh, to each enclosure. And you have a, that hooked up to a hygrometer that whenever it gets below a certain uh, water or humidity percentage, it just automatically missed your tanks. That's the best way. A lot of people don't do it though because it is probably the most expensive way to do it. But those are the tools that you'll need to get going. Yes. First things first, what kind of humidity is your reptile need? Does it need a dry climate like the desert? Most snakes don't need that. Definitely ball pythons don't. Uh, some reptiles do, so once again, figure out what it is you need and go from there. Or do you need an enclosure with more humidity? Some snakes might like that, but you don't want it to be too wet though. Where's that raincoat? Okay, now we're gonna talk about increasing humidity. First thing, number one, substrate. Some stumps, substrate will help humidity and some, some substrate will decrease humidity. Uh, you'll want what, it, it, depending on what your reptile is, what it needs, dry or uh, it, it humid climate. Uh, we're going after humid climate here. So you're going to want something uh, that can absorb humidity and take it on and then just release it back into the air slowly over time. Uh, something like that, a cocoa substrate, you know, like cocoa husk. 
uh, cocoa fiber, uh, plantation soil, uh, cedar, uh, forest floor, uh, something like that, it, depending what uh, species you're after and what you're doing. Uh, those are all things that will help the humidity. Now we've done a video on these substrates before and we'll put the link to that right here. Uh, so you can click on that and you can get a bit more in depth on what those, uh, it, those kind of substrates are. Next, number two, glass enclosure versus plastic enclosure. Glass enclosure with a screen on top, you'll lose a lot of humidity and a lot of vapor through there. So plastic enclosures that are enclosed all the way around with a sliding door on the front or a, a swing door on the front, that'll hold humidity a lot, lot better. So if you do got to have a glass enclosure, it's what you want, what you're going to use, or maybe it's all you have available to you. What you do want to do is you want to put this. Plexiglass. You want to put that on the screen. Now you don't want to put it, if you do have a heat lamp or something like that, you don't want to put it in the way of the heat lamp because then it's a fire hazard, it can melt, whatever. But you want to put it at a, on at least half of the screen and it'll trap in that moisture. Uh, it, I have that on top of the tank that you were just saying. Actually, I have two of them up there uh, to help trap in the moisture. And it works great if you do have to use glass enclosures or just one too. Item number three, cub size or water disc size. That might be a little bit extreme, but if you do have something like this in a glass terrarium or in plastic enclosure, and those are the ones you're gonna really have the trouble with humidity, the larger, uh, larger enclosures. So you're gonna get something with more, not depth, but more surface size, with more air exposure. Not that, that won't do the trick at all. This, if you can fit this in enclosure, that'd be great. Uh, that'd uh, put a lot more humidity into the air, a lot more uh, air uh, touching the surface of the water, which would definitely help. So, what's next? Next is item number four. Four. Move the dish, water dish, closer to the hot side. Now all that that does is if it, water gets hotter, it evaporates quicker. So if you just move it a couple inches, because there's a gradient all the way across the tank, usually the hot side sits at around 90, and the cold side will sit at around 80-ish, give or take. So if you move it a couple few inches, or a half a foot, or a foot closer to the hot side, the water will start to evaporate faster, which means you just have more water vapor in the air. So that can help increase humidity. That's tip number four. Number five, misting the terrarium or enclosure. So that's where this thing comes in. So that this is the best way to increase humidity. Now I'm in here every day and I do this every day. And this is where I like to use this because it gives off a fine mist and you can control it much better. And it's, you just open the closure or tub or whatever. And if it's dry or starting to dry up, you give the whole thing just a little bit of a mist and then it, it starts to increase humidity. And you can use a hy hygrometer to measure how much humidity that is bringing into it. Now, careful not to spray too much because it's easy to put humidity in it's much more difficult to take it out. It's a lot of waiting game to just take it out. So now we're gonna get into number six, which has to do with the sprayer as well. You can either spray six, is spray under the terrarium, or the animal itself. Thank you for that. I needed a shower. Open. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. So you can just, if there's, it, okay, that's enough. <laughs> Okay, so Spray me if you need to. That sounds like a good idea. <laughs> okay. So, you can spray under the hide where the animal is, and that'll definitely increase a lot of humidity because that's where all the heat is, where the hide is for the animal. And it'll just evaporate all that into the air very quickly. 
and it'll increase the humidity very quickly. You're gonna need to do that more often though, but that's definitely a surefire way to get humidity up and humidity up fast. Now there's sort of another controversial, controversial way, which is you can mist the animal itself. Now, some say that'll have trouble thermoregulating after you spray it. it I have an ambient uh, room temp in here that sits about 78 anyways, so they're never really going to get cold. So if you have a reptile room where you can control the temperature, that's great. You can go ahead and spray them. I'd say it's just fine. If you just have random uh, spots in the house, well, then you might want to just stick to spraying in their hide or uh, it would, it, what have you. Number seven. Humidity boxes. Now, humidity boxes, I went over this in the same video as the substrate, so you can go back and click on that link in the substrate part of this uh, topic here, which I think was topic number one to increase humidity, and that'll give a little bit on how to make a humidity box. Very, very simple, but uh, we'll just go over it quick. You get a box like this, Something nice and easy, it can be a lot smaller if you like to, uh, all depending on the size of your snake. So you just get that, you cut out a little hole in it right there, you get some sphagnum moss, or you can just get some forest floor, or some other uh, some other mulch, and have that humid, like have that pretty, not saturated, but very high humidity level in there. Water it down, uh, it's, it's sphagnum moss is the best way that I find to get uh, something like that going on. I don't have a humidity box, don't need them. Uh, I'm able to maintain the humidity in here pretty well. But you just get that, cut it open, and a lot of snakes, and ball pythons especially, will regulate their humidity fairly well. They'll just go in there when they feel they're getting too dry and they'll get out of there when they feel they've had enough and then they'll shed just fine as long as they have that. So that's humidity box. Number eight, bioactive setup. I don't have a bioactive setup, but the best thing about the bioactive setup is plants. So you can have plants. Key thing about that is you water the plants in the bioactive setup as well as the floor or the uh, the bottom of the bioactive setup usually has water and drainage so you get that there as well which keeps the humidity up but you water the plants and they absorb the water and they release it back into the air slowly keeping humidity up now bioactive setup if you have a screen up top once again you want to have that, uh, that piece of plexiglass or something like that up there holding most of that moisture in. You don't want to have it completely blocked up because you want to have some airflow. But once again, bioactive setup because of plants. And if you have a reptile room as well uh, and you want to regulate it and you have uh, natural sunlight in there, I don't mind, uh, and you have UV, you can just grow a lot of plants in your reptile room and that'll help keep the natural humidity up of the reptile room itself as long as the doors are closed and windows are closed as well. Anyways, that's about it. Thank you guys for watching Bax's Balls. We'll see you next time. Like, share, and subscribe. And leave a comment down below if you like this video.